Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video, I thought I would go over something kind of cool that many of you have suggested to me in the past to try and use, but I haven't actually taken the time and checked it out. It's called the Wayback Machine. It's archive.org. It's where you can go and actually see little snippets in time of websites back what they used to be. So like with this right here, I'm actually looking at a, a, little, a little piece of time uh, from eBay. This is back in July of 2017. This is back when they used to have eBay guides. And what prompted me to go to archive.org and to look up uh, these guides on eBay was actually I wanted to check out the match print checklist. And in doing so, I had to go through different guides until I was able to find that specific one because they don't archive every single website but they do archive a lot of the information and because I was one of the top guide reviewers I actually had a lot of my guides on the home page for the trading cards which was nice because that was one of the pages that they held together and so if you look right here this is one that I did a while back and I had looked this one up for a someone who was on my patreon they were asking about how the um, the cards were packaged on different things. He was talking about the which promos come in packets of 25, and this was something that I had made uh, back in 2014. You can see the date right here, July 19th, 2014. Um, had 128 likes. I know that doesn't seem like a crazy amount, but that was actually quite a bit for guides back then. I ended up being uh, at one point a top 500 reviewer. They give they used to give you these little badges and things. But anyways, you can see like right here. If you look at Pikachu, the number one uh, promo, the Ivy one, you could, those originally come in bricks of a thousand. Maybe it was 900, but they, they come in those really long bricks that you guys have seen me uh, show you guys a few times. Not specifically for that one, but for the Bumblebee Pikachu, the Ho-Oh, the Rapidash, that kind of stuff. You can also see right here where there was a variation where there was a first edition stamp. Uh, those come from the Jungle first edition booster boxes. We've seen one of those opened up on camera before, at least one. I believe there's two. And then there's also a, a Gray Star, which had a Japanese stock. which is So it's technically a Japanese promo. It was Koro Koro and, and so forth. I went through all the different variations that were that I knew of at that time, how they originally came, that kind of stuff. And uh, some of this stuff is definitely out of date because it doesn't show the ghost stamp, the no stamp uh, for the number two, three, four, five. And there were some other things in here I believe like I didn't have. Yeah, I didn't have the Ho-Oh or the Rapidash in the bricks that they originally came in. I just had them loose. Um, but this was a this like I said this was uh, one of the things that uh, also prompted me to look up archive. It was this one uh, for a patron, and then there was also the match print guide that I had made, and I had made this guide just to kind of document uh, the exact numbers that I got from the former. Um, he was a designer. That's what it was. He was the designer at the uh, Watsi factory. He, uh, he's the one who sold me these very, very cheap. They were just kind of salvaged. He had a lot. He's the one who had the mock-up for the Jungle Pack for the Neo Destiny double clam blister. And you can see right here, 10,000 views. I mean, that was a lot for me back then, you know, 2014. But all of these added up together. It really helped out in pushing uh, my top my, my guides to be one of the top reviewers on eBay. And, and this stuff, it, what, the way it worked with the reviews they incorporated the items that you actually reviewed and got thumbs up and also the guides that you wrote. So for me, it was just guides. I never really did much on the review side. I did a few, but it, it wasn't a ton of them. And I kind of go through, you know, the history of the match prints here. And then right here is what I was mainly looking for, the exact numbers for each one of the cards. So this showed every single card, you know, the name, the number that existed as a match print, and it had the numbers that went along with it. You can see there were a few cards that had four. You had Bill's Maintenance, Copycat, Dual Ball. And as far as I know, you can see right there, there's a few threes. There was only one card that's, that's known to have been destroyed and was one of the Darkness Energies. And that was because of a fire, unfortunately. But this is what's out there. There's a link for this. You can check this out by looking up uh, the eBay guides. This is from July 2015. This is when I was able to find it. Uh, basically you just go to archive.com and you can work it out from there there's a link you just put in ebay.com and you can kind of go back in time if you go to one of the the main uh, guide there's like a if you go to the very bottom of the page uh, for ebay.com you can actually search control F guides and there's a link for guides so if you click on that and then you search within the trading card category put in Pokemon 
a lot of mine should be on that front page. And then if you actually go to my username, back then it was the Charizard Authority, you'll be able to uh, look at my profile and it has a, uh, most of my guides listed there as well. I don't think they'll do all of them, um, but if you have a direct link, which some of these I did have direct links to, you are able to uh, actually paste that directly into archive, which a lot of times that does not always work but if you can click on links and find your way to it through navigation from the old sites, then it works out a little bit better. All right, so the next one, uh, this one right here I thought was kind of interesting. This is another one of the guides that I had written. This is one that I believe had, quite, had updated versions past this, but I did one where it talks about rarity terms. And like you can see common, uncommon, like these are the basic ones that you knew. But I kind of went into the stuff that, people weren't completely familiar with and you have like a spec some of you may not even know what an a spec card is it was kind of like the amazing rares think of it that way uh just a, a type of mechanic or something that was a little bit different a different special rarity that was introduced for a short window of time by pokemon that got people excited for a little bit and then uh it eventually went away and i did that all the way through here and i rem the reason i know that it was updated like this is cracked ice that one's still around today, but I kind of put in here the other names that people refer to it, like Shattered Hollow, 3D, Crystal Shard. I'd, I'd seen all of those. You got Crystal right there, EX. Like this is the lowercase EX, and then you have the, the uppercase EX. You know, these may not be basic Pokemon. You can see right there, Charizard EX actually evolves, but if you have the uppercase E and X, then they're going to be basic Pokemon. But it was something that was introduced during Generation 5. You got Full Art, FA different ways that you could see it in a title. And the main reason I did this because I had so many different cards and individual listings at the time. This was an easy way for me to send my customers to a page where they could understand the lingo that was going on in the title because it wasn't uniform for the longest time. And the reason I know that it was updated because I don't have Flare in here. And Flare was something that was for a very short period of time in the X and Y era. You know, like uh, Head Ringer, that, that was a popular flare back in Phantom Forces. But it goes all the way down through here, different types of uh, rarities and stuff. But we won't spend a ton of time on it. Uh, I want to show you guys PSA. So hopefully, let me uh, check OBS, make sure you guys can see it. Yeah, it looks like you can. So this was the one of the oldest ca captures that I could find for PSA. But this was the very first one where I could find where it actually shows that PSA wheel grade Pokemon cards and this was from February 2000 or February 7th the year 2000 so they immediately started grading Pokemon cards which I found very interesting I wouldn't have thought they would have graded it so quickly but they definitely did I guess it makes sense how big of a phenomenon you know Pokemon was back then but here's that page like like I said these links for the most part they're going to work as long as there was a capture for those links some of the links will not work um, but this one you can, you can see where, you know, the very first line, there are lots of fake Pokemon carts out there. You know, even back in the year 2000, you know, that was an issue that was going on. You can see the, the type of picture that they had right here. You've got the dark Persian. This is the Japanese version of it. And you can see how the cases kind of looked right there. I believe, yeah, I had this page here set up. Uh, this one right here. So this is... What was on this page? Okay, so you used to have to subscribe to get um, the the PSA price guide or the pop report. I never, I didn't realize this. This is just something that I found while I was browsing through. Uh, for one month it was five bucks, six months, you know, twenty two ninety five, forty dollars for a year, and then you would have access to that information. So we're we're kind of blessed now in that we don't have to pay for that it, it's automatically available to everyone out there and i think it's beneficial to the psa as well because you know people are going to be visiting their site and wanting to know what's going on why are the prices increased so much by just uh, having the cards graded all right so this is from the year 2001 this is october 31st so we got halloween uh, what you're looking at here is some of the old prices and i actually thought this was going to be lower because of my experience around 2008 2009 several years later but you can see right here modern bulk six dollars you can see minimum order of 100 cards you don't doesn't really say anything here about the the value uh, but you can see right here submissions of 50 or more qualify for ten dollar uh, discount, I guess that would be for the show services. I don't know if that applies to you know some of this other stuff up in here, but you can see right there, walk through fifty dollars. You know, again, there's no 
price limitations at this point that I'm seeing and you can see that same day guaranteed and the reason I wanted to mention that guarantee I don't know if it mentions it down here let me see if it's on the next page well we'll get around to it but they actually I'm gonna show you guys a guarantee that I've heard mentioned by Gary King Pokemon before but I'm gonna actually show you where PSA did have it written on their page at one time or another so now we're going to 2004 so this is three years later uh, premium still at a hundred dollars you know per card but they do introduce, you know, the value. So this is for cards at 10,000 or more. You know, the walkthrough is 2,500. If you go all the way down here to, where is it at? You got modern bulk. You still don't see the value, in, you know, in these cards here. But I think with the modern, $8 per card, this is 500 and under. So you're probably looking at, you know, max value 500 bucks. So, you know, a lot of this stuff. But for Pokemon, this wouldn't have applied to anything. So, you know, if we were trying to grade Pokemon back in this time, like everything was worth less than $500. Like everything was bulk. That's just the way it was. You know, Pokemon didn't see any types of gains or real increases until many years later. All right, so here's one of what I wanted to show you guys about the guaranteed time, turnaround time. So they're invalid during the week of a major card show. You know, who, who knows when that is, right? You know, normally you just send stuff off whether or not they applied that, you know, let's just take off a week anyways. But it says the number of days it takes for any deliver delivery agency to return the cards to the submitter and it's not in included in the number of days allotted to PSA's turnaround guarantees. So they're going to take out, you know, the times of transit and that kind of stuff. But it says if PSA fails to meet turnaround guarantees for paid orders, you will receive a credit for like number of submissions. So I, I like I said, I've heard Gary King Pokemon talk about how if it got to double days so like if they if it was 45 days and it got to the 90th day they would give him an equal amount of submissions that he submitted on so like if he paid for 50 cards at the 45 day and it, it got to the 90 day mark they would actually give him that amount of submissions for free to send more cards in but this is um basically saying if they don't meet the guaranteed turnaround time they're going to get that anyway so you don't even have to get to double days so they did used to have a a guaranteed turnaround time for this kind of stuff but i imagine back then the volume was way lower um you can see right here that this is in 1999 so this like this is prior to some of those other tabs that i've shown you guys but you can see right there that you know we have an economy service at eight dollars per card so it didn't go down until later on and I, I remember a time when I could get grading services for as cheap as 425. And so I imagine, you know, there have been specials that were stuck in there, here and there, that uh, that we couldn't get. Oh, in fact, here's one of them. Here's one of the specials I'd forgotten. I did a little snippet of this. This was in 2010. So this is, you know, 11 years after that pr prior page where the cheaper service was six dollars. You can see right here where there was a collector's club special, 450 per card, 50 card minimum. And then, you know, it was a 45 business day turnaround, max value $100. So, you know, it was, it was pretty cheap cards. But back in 2010, that was almost everything. You could submit just about whatever you wanted at that price. And I remember I had, I, it might have been this special that I, I got in on. I remember I negotiated by saying, hey, what if I send over 500 cards and they knocked off 25 or 50 cents, something like that. In fact, I, I don't think it was this one because it was a $5 special and it got knocked down to 450 So, this is probably the lowest that I'd seen it publicly shown. There may have been other snippets in time where it was indeed lower, but I didn't have time to go through every single one of the um, the pages that were captured. All right, next we're going to get into something very interesting, you guys. I believe you're going to be blown away by the prices that I'm getting ready to show you guys. So if you guys have ever heard of Hills Wholesale Gaming, they're one of the first distributors that I could buy from because I didn't have uh, a resale license when I first started kind of buying, you know, into this modern retail type stuff. And this was back for me in 2000, I'd probably say about 2010. But this is a year prior to that. So this is 2009. I want to show you guys some prices just to give you an idea. So like right here, it goes through the different products that you could buy into. So this this was February 19th, 2009. You can see the 2007 Holiday 10 case. Look at that, 90 bucks. You know, Black Star Mew promo card. Keep an eye on that one. You know, two dollars. You know, even in uh, 2009, you know, they were trying to sell that one. But Majestic Dawn booster box. You know, eighty-four dollars, less than what you're going to pay for a modern box at release from distribution right now, unless you have, you know, 
a high quantity amount that you're going to be buying. Um, you're going to be lucky to find it for $84. But they've got several other boxes in here. There, here's an EX Series Power Keepers, $82. There's the Power Pack, $65. Bucks. Got Diamond and Pearl, $82. Here you have a. Uh, by the pack, you can get 36 Crystal Guardian booster packs for $72. They were really trying to move them, you know. When you, when you get down to that low, they're, they're trying to push them out. Fire Red Leaf Green, you can get those for 25 bucks. So even back then, Fire Red Leaf Green was a little bit of a premium at $6 per pack. $5 a pack if you buy five of them. There's Hidden Legends. Got got some other stuff in here. But we're going to move on. We're going to move farther back. We're going back to 2005, four years prior. Immediately, something should stick out. You have a base set, basic. It was a basic booster box. I wonder if the link for this even works. I doubt it does. $65. You could buy a base set booster box for $65. Yeah, you can see it right there. I don't know how many you could add to your cart. You've got a Game Boy cover. You've got these other things. There's there's that Black Star Mew, $5 now. <laughs> that You could buy a Black Star Mew for 5 bucks, which is more than what you would pay today. But a base set booster box, $65, well under retail. We've got Dragon, an EX Dragon box, $55. Hidden Legends, $72. There's that Dragonite from the Game Boy. You could, if you bought five plus, you can get those for $9. And there's the Neo 2 binder set, $6 a piece. Super cheap stuff. Now, if you want to buy them by the pack, you could pay $1.50 for a base set booster pack. If you bought 100 plus, $1.25. So you're looking at less than $50 for. 36 packs of base set. And it does the same thing for Deoxys. Deoxys. Look at that. $1.25 a pack. Got Ruby and Sapphire. Got Expedition, Fossil, and Gym Challenge. Man, can you can you imagine? Like Expedition, you know, you're probably pushing $1,000 a pack now. All right. Let's see. Next we have, this is going to be, uh, this is going to really set it in, I think, for you guys. This is going to be the last page I'm going to show you. So this is the oldest page that I could find. This was in 2002. This is for Hills Wholesale Gaming again. Let me see if I can uh, zoom in over here. Jungle Booster Pack. Booster Box, not packs. Jungle Booster Box, $29. $29. Probably, I would say even very conservatively, that is going to be less than half of what they paid from distribution, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, nowadays, you're looking at what is that? Twenty percent of MSRP, probably even less than that. Thirty bucks on it was about 150. Yeah, uh, just over twenty percent of MSRP. Got a rocket. That's Team Rocket. Twenty nine dollars. If you buy five plus, you can get it for twenty four dollars. Gym Heroes, twenty nine dollars. Gym Challenge, twenty nine dollars. Fossil. $35. So you're getting up there now. You're pushing up in price, but if you buy five plus, $30 each. And then base set booster box, same thing. You got $40 for a basic, not base set. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about base set. $40. And then if you buy five plus, you're only going to pay $35. Same thing with base set two, $20, $29. Neo Discovery. Neo, the Neo sets had really just come out. I think Neo Rev probably would have been. Oh yeah, there it is. Neo Rev is on here. So Neo Discovery seventy five, Neo Genesis seventy five, Neo Revelation seventy five. I mean, you're talking about really, really low prices, and none of these are even referring to first edition unlimited. There may not have even been a price differential between first edition and unlimited at that time. Who knows? But I thought when I saw this, these prices were just super crazy. I remember seeing a Neo Genesis Unlimited booster box go on auction for $36 and I, you know, I've never been able to find that sale again anywhere on the internet. That was on eBay. But this kind of stuff right here really put it into perspective for me. You got to think this basic booster box, you know, five plus of them, you get them for $35 each. These were selling for around the $35,000 mark just a few years ago. Even now, you know, they're still pushing $12,000 or so. Super expensive. Back then, they were dirt cheap, but you have to understand, that'd be like, I mean, that's worse than like the Wilderness Metazoo low. It would be like trying to buy in, you know, at that point for Pokemon. It was, just, it was such a surplus. People didn't care. You could get it anywhere. People just wanted to move this product. It was printed so hard. So you have to understand, like, if you were investing at that time, I mean, you were the dumb of the dumb like nobody thought that you were doing the right thing people were already relating this to the beanie babies and everything else so to me you know hindsight's 2020 yeah we'd love to go back in time spend ten thousand dollars and invest in these boxes but back then 
you had no prospects of this going anywhere. I mean, this was a really dead time mm -hmm. in the Pokemon TCG, so it was just super, super high risk. But, you know, some people did just set these things back because there was very little money put into the stuff. And, you know, I've heard of hordes, you know, some of these boxes into the thousands, but I've never actually seen it myself. It would be very interesting to uh, to talk to somebody at Hills and figure out if this was even the low. Did they cut deals for people who bought 100 plus boxes of this stuff? You know, it's just crazy to think about. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this moment in time where we got to look through the Wayback Machine. It's archive.org. You can... Check it out yourself. Look at other websites. See if you can find other cool information like I found here. Hope you enjoyed it. No, it wasn't my typical thing. But anyways, we'll have another video coming out soon.